Rail? I, uh, yes, already started. Isn't it with special Okay. Hello guys, just waiting for your comments to appear. Uh, the evening live stream. Hope the quality will be okay. Yeah, thank you for your likes for this live stream. Uh, hello, hi, hi, pilot boys, nice nickname. And then it's how I'm fine. Hi, hi, hello. Oh, yeah, here we go. I can see your comments. I don't know if we have delay. Uh, how's your day going? The day is fine. It's evening time already past midnight. I just can't sleep. <laughs> Steve, nice to see you. Uh, I'm good. Thank you. It's been a while since we spoke on a Skype. Maybe we should take a conversation again. Dobry večer. Hi Betsy, nice to meet you here. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, almost half past midnight. What? Can't sleep. <laughs> Just can't sleep. Hey, hello, hello. So the idea um, for the stream. Yeah, thank you, Barbara. Uh, the idea of the stream is to get your ideas of how should I, you know, continue to film the aviation related content. So what to do next, because I'm in lack of, um, let's say, any kind of ideas, because I'm not flying. There will be some series of a day in life as an airline pilot, just one more flight that is left for me for editing uh, I'm getting ready <laughs> to head to Wisconsin yeah good Steve I hope you'll have wonderful summertime there awesome um, so can you please tell me why so late Dennis I just cannot sleep <laughs> um, so do you have any kind of ideas what should I film about yeah, already have the long beard. I should shave probably at least here and here. Um, I'm out of my job and probably I'll not fly nearby in nearby future. Probably, probably a year or something. If you need a house, I have one in Albuquerque completely available. <laughs> uh i know you're stuck in ukraine yeah i am stuck here for a while and from the events that are happening in ukraine um i don't know then ever then it's gonna over probably one year or maybe more so far we don't know today united states approved uh the weapon supplies for U ukraine it's the land lease and they do it second times in their history First, it was during the Second World War, and now they're providing us with some aids, and that's good. I also, don't know about this channel, since um, the pilot box channel degraded. Uh, okay, I'll be... Yeah. 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 Okay. So, hi, hi to Orlando, Slava Ukraini, <laughs> Giram Slava. How about plane spotting? Um, I cannot spot the planes here since uh, the airspace is closed and... And what should I spot? <laughs> Your updates on the situation in Ukraine are most interesting and it's always good to hear that you're in a family safe. Yeah, but I update the situation on my other channel. And that channel actually got some views compared to pilot blog even. So this channel is just degraded. I don't know why. I don't have many views on my videos. Still the subscribers there they are growing, but um, there are not many views. Not as before. 
so I start to worry about this channel. Maybe it, maybe it went to some kind of shadow ban. I don't know. Are you still in the village or in Kiev now? No, I'm in the village. In Kiev, it's uh, so far it's um, not safe. Today there were some of the bombs, bomb shells in the cave, so I'll continue to stay here in the village. Probably gonna move to other place because it's two months, more than two two months, we live uh, to the with the people who who are the relatives of my wife, but they are far relatives, so I don't think it's comfortable for them to see us for more than two months. So probably gonna you know rent uh, apartments or house somewhere for apartments i cannot i i want to go to also to some kind of village because i don't want to go to the city because all all of the cities are under attack and on village in the village it's more safe make a video fly from ukraine to malaysia uh, easy to say uh, respect to you and your family. Hope best of luck. Thanks, Adam. Are uh, you still safe there, Dennis? Yeah, I'm good. But we have some problems with the power lines here. I don't know why. Uh, but it was very hard to get the internet connection. It was hard to get the electricity a couple of days ago. And now they call that they fixed um, the problem. They solved it, but for how long we don't know. So this must um, we have the problems so here and there with the power lines. Did you think about to move to another country and start a job in your airline, Jacob? I would like to fly the airplane. Um, I'm still employed in my airline, however, but I didn't see any chance to fly. In nearby future with my airline so I might try myself somewhere else probably but I cannot leave my country because of the martial law yep uh, so I'm stuck here I cannot earn the money <laughs> I cannot even leave my country so the only income I have is from this channel and from my um, update channel Dennis Davidev uh, but um, it seems like the channel, the pilot book channel, is uh, not performing well. Uh, like late nearby week, the views went down. So uh, I don't know what what happens to this channel. What is happening? Why don't you tell us about how you became a pilot? The life, the fantasies, the good, the bads, and how you balance life with flying. It can be different side of being a pilot. Yeah, Jason, I already filmed the videos about that. They are mostly my podcasts. Also, there were some of the videos my way to become a pilot. So I already filmed about it. Probably I'm gonna fly some fly some simulator stuff, but not sure about it. Hello, I hope you and your family will be okay where you are, where you'll be. Yeah. Wow, and uh, here in the United States, uh, they need many pilots. American Airlines, they'll, yeah, I know, they need many. Pilotsky, um, no, I don't, I don't think about it. I don't think it's going to be interesting. Uh, my village life here, nothing really special. It's day by day, <laughs> the same work, not very interesting. Uh, you can recycle all pilot videos by creating YouTube short uh, and link the original longer videos. Yeah, probably that's the way. How come you can't fly anymore, even if the war ends? Um, so, um, more aviation. Thanks for your comments. So now I cannot fly because I cannot leave my country because um, there are no any airlines flying inside. Ukraine, but if I will not fly for let's say the end of the year, uh, I'll need to go through the deep training, and I'll if I'm not gonna fly for three years, I need to go and renew my type rating since the very beginning. I would say so. Yeah, that requires lots of money. Go to Air France. Uh, <laughs> I don't know French, sorry. You need to know French if you want to work inside 
in if you want to work with that airline even english you see even english is hard for me <laughs> hi from new zealand uh, how about telling us your explanation of aircraft incidents yeah true could be um, i just need to move out from this place because here we have just a single room i need more spacious place uh, to to film the video about it so i can do it here but it will be unprofessional um so i'm thinking now to move somewhere and rent the house that's my idea because here we, we live with some people i'm okay with people but probably they're not okay with us because we are staying here for two months and you know staying in the same house with the people whom you don't really know so probably if i'll have the opportunity probably it's better to rent the house the rent price they rose as the war starts um, for the for the safe place let's say but yeah hello pilot hope everything is okay keep safe and you and your family hope this terrible war ends soon cheers friend hope you can continue your amazing work yeah i hope too <laughs> but for me it's like it happened in my previous life it seems like i've never flown the airplane this for me you know <laughs> i cannot believe that i I am a pilot. Since you are in a small village, do you know? Uh, do you now have a cow cowboy hat? It's not popular here. It's just uh, United States stuff, you know. It's not popular. Hello, pilot. Uh, how do you get uh, circular Wi-Fi during this war? There is no problem with the Wi-Fi. If you open the military map, you'll see that the, the hotspot is just on the south and eastern part of Ukraine. The rest of Ukraine lives as it used to be mostly. Um, well, you can go, you can take loans, you can, you know, banks are working, the shops are working, everything uh, mostly working as before. For uh, the place where I am, everything the same, just to have some problems with power lines. Hello, pilot. Do you get circle? Oh, yeah. Hi, Dennis. Uh, are your airline 737 safe uh, so far? From what I know, they are safe. I don't, I don't know whether they are safe, really, because they are here mostly in Ukraine, but they are intact, I would say. Hello, Pilot. How do you get uh, the same question? Hello from Germany. Greetings to Germany. Uh, do Ukraine International have any flights to, flights to Sweden? Yeah, I used to fly to Sweden. And um, yeah, what was the place where I flown? Let's open the, the map. Uh, I have no internet connection. Why? America, its system and its policies are caused the destruction of the world. Okay, we're gonna bow, uh, bow this uh, user username forever. <laughs> uh, stupid guys in the chat. Probably I had some charter flight on to Sweden. Mm, no, 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 no. It was it was in Finland the charter flight in Sweden. I flown just to Stockholm, and I performed actually my last flight on uh, Boeing seven three seven Classic to uh, Orlando Stockholm Airport, and it was fantastic. Since we did the outer land, the visibility was close to three hundred meters. uh yeah no problems good evening from germany i'm a fan of the 727 isn't it a nice airplane yeah of course Austin, it's nice it's absolutely great how will the war end if the united snakes keep providing weapons oh so many trolls here oh. user is hidden from the channel very interesting yeah 
the the situation now in Ukraine is like we are fighting for our freedom. Like if someone will go to a house and you don't have the weapons, let's say, and those guys have like robbers and they start to rape your wife to kill your children and you don't have weapons, you know, and you just shout to your neighbor, the good, your friend, like, neighbor, give me weapons. And they just give the weapons to fight back. So the situation is like that. Very simple explanation. My dad flew with the SAS for 30 years. He was always telling me stories about landings, funny pilot stories. Why don't you get in touch with your FOs and other captains? Tell us fun stories. Nah, other captains are not really into this YouTube stuff. Maybe first officers do. Uh, good idea, by the way. Thank you. Did you bring your blackboard here? <laughs> no, it's kind of big. Was the Illusion 62 a copy of the Vickers or not? No, it wasn't. It's completely different. The engines uh, mount are similar, but they are different. The Illusion is much bigger. And in a way, it was a successful airplane compared to the British main. Where will Russia drop the atomic bomb? Oh, once again... Why are so 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 many so many trolls here? Russian airlines now have layoffs. Yeah, they do have, and they will have uh, around. They will lay off around eighty percent of pilots. That's my prediction. The shops in your area have good stock. Uh, fine. Yeah, everything is good here. Uh, we don't have big shops here, just small village shops, but they are working. We have all, all that we need there. Hi, Dennis. I'm in school waiting to be a pilot now. Uh, yeah, best of luck with your goals. What aircraft is the, mo the most comfortable in your opinion? I think for a pilot, it is Airbus. It is more comfortable or Boeing 767 because the cockpit is very comfortable and um, as for passenger perspective it doesn't matter it depends on the um, configuration of the airplane rather than the airplane type but you may find more comfortable airplanes um, long-haul airplanes than compared to short-haul or middle range i've got a whole bunch of funny stuff uh, that happened uh, over my 32 years we could put something to the, together and it might be entertaining you won't believe <laughs> some of the stuff that one of, okay steve we can do it yeah we can do the skype uh together with steve we have the idea steve is ex united pilot he flown 737 767 uh sorry 777 and probably gonna film the video uh like the interview or like a, it, it's not gonna be the interview it's just gonna be the podcast you know just uh, talking about different things could be entertaining thank you steve for for your support with that it could be awesome uh just call me then you're ready for it just type on on a skype I'll start my service on max training next year. I live in the UK and will work for Ryanair. Wow, DR, S super. It seems like you come, you were commenting lots of times on my channel. Thank you for watching me. And Sentry 7 Max is one of the best airplanes out there for this airplane, let's say, uh, modules, airplane types. You ask about ideas for videos, right? You could make videos about aircraft dynamics in flight, flight controls, mean and max speed stalls, configuration, uh, coffin corner, etc. And you don't need uh, complicated graphics. Yeah, probably you are. You are right. Turbulence, how it happens. Uh, it seems like I filmed already about it, but I'm not sure. Are the pilots from South Africa bold pilots look for flight 157 uh, 
Frosten. I don't. I didn't get the question. Sorry. What is your favorite airplane other than 737? Well, I like many, but my favorite plane from all of the commercial airplanes is Airbus A350 because it's the masterpiece for now and it contains all the technology that we may use for the modern commercial airplane. So I like Airbus A350. Would you like to fly 777 for Ukraine, Dennis, once you get back? Uh, Jason, probably. I would like to fly anything <laughs> that flies. Hello, my friend. Glad you're doing okay. Miss uh, the often videos from the cockpit, but glad to see your videos. Feel being yourself and being okay. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. You say God bless you. Oh, Detroit, Rock City. <laughs> Thank you, Rob, and greetings to you. Yeah, we're gonna see, I hope someday you're gonna see more cockpit videos. Do you have software with all fly, flight you fly? We have software, yeah, I have it on my iPad for uh, performance calculations for navigation, so I still have it. What do you think about Fly Dubai? Nice airline, but if you want to fly there, you're going to work hard and you're going to fly a lot. It's good if you want to build up your career, but if you are close to retirement, I think that rhythm is not for you. Are you still in contact with your last uh, first officer and cabin crew? Last first officer and cabin crew. Um, yeah, we have many of the stuff here. I even don't... I, I want to recall the last cabin crew I've flown with. <laughs> I'll call, then I'll get settled in Wisconsin. In the next couple of weeks, we can have some fun. Yeah, yeah Steve, thank you. Thank you. Uh, for the next couple of weeks, I hope I'll solve the, prob uh, the problem with the apartments here or with different housing, I don't know. Because here, as I said to you, there are several reasons to change this apartment for other one. Um, here, the good thing that I pay nothing, but I have to work <laughs> in the farm <laughs> to help relatives. And uh, also, I live with someone uh, here for a very long time. It's kind of not good. Uh, for the people, well, I'm okay, they are okay, but I know that if so, well, maybe I'm so, maybe I'm introvert or something. I need my own place, probably. Here we have just a single room for me, my wife, my daughter, and I need like separate room to work for my videos uh, because it's going crazy. You now, then you film something, someone well, your wife or your daughter, they doing other activities and they, if you want to record the audio, it, uh, it's going to be kind of bad, you know, you always in interfered and interrupted and that drives me mad, <laughs> honestly. So I need like this quiet place. So I'm thinking to rent the house here somewhere. The price to rent the house is around five hundred six hundred dollars if the house is is good um for the patreon help probably i'll be okay with it for at least three months to rent the house so i'm thinking to change the place and the second reason the main reason now is because we have problems with the power lines here and together with internet so <laughs> that's the big problem here in this village. I don't know why it happens here because here we have powerful lines, but yeah, I don't know why it happened. Uh, let's go to your questions. In your opinion, should the British be doing more? Not a political question, just asking a personal interest. No, the British, they are really helping us the most, one of the most na nations, one, the country that helps us the most. So Poland, British, United States, those are three countries uh, help us in the best way possible. Now United States will give us more weapons and that's good. Uh, you know, in Afghanistan, they had to retreat their troops because they 
the United States, they didn't see the way out, how they can deal with uh, this local conflict, even though they're just uh, Taliban, they don't have the, this regular army, you see, they're just, you know, uh, rebels, rebel army, they don't, didn't have any aircraft, but still the United States had to retreat because uh, local people in Afghanistan, they mostly uh, welcomed I would say Taliban. Well, if we go to a social media, I know that many were against them, but you know they just came with no battle. Uh, they reached all the cities, Kabul. There were almost no fighting. But here in Ukraine, it's a totally different thing. And if uh, they saw us that we we fighting for our freedom, and not only for Ukraine, because Russia would took Ukraine and go further, further. They would take part of Poland. It could. So if they would not give us weapons now, the world will go to the third world war. The risk for of it, it's uh, still now uh, ongoing. Uh, I would say it's already the third world war, but not that explosive, um, just in Ukraine. But if Ukraine right surrender, uh, Russia would not stop. They we need to stop them here, and the United States will help us. Uh, you need a clean room like homework. Yeah. Did you think about change uh, to an Airbus airplane? Yeah, why not? It, no, I like Airbuses. Uh, Hair first time seeing go live like this. Yeah, thank you. I'm I'm going live through the phone because I have probably some problems with my personal computer. I tried to go live with there, but image is lagging. So streaming from the phone. How are your experiences landing at Skipple Airport, Dennis? Well, I like it. It's nice, but then you have runway one eight right. If I recall correctly so you need to taxi a lot taxi a lot but i like it jenny hi hi it's so late for you but glad you <laughs> to see you yeah thank you jenny um yeah i, I got your message on the skype today sorry it was uh, some problems with electricity here with the power lines uh, so we almost hadn't had the power for that that's why i was out of reach i was able uh, to get some internet on my phone um in a village but yeah not a lot what happened if you don't talk to the atc do you mean if you fly and don't talk to atc well there was a case in my first airline then uh, captain with first officer there just uh, put on their headsets and they didn't increase the volume. Uh, what happened? They realized that they are out of radio just in, uh, I think, 45 minutes. Uh, they were flying ATR. And all the ATCs, they were calling them, but they were like, you know, talking with each other, those pilots, and uh, they were kind of busy talking. It's bad. <laughs> So they reached the cruising level, they put off their headsets, and after that it was the big scandal for our airline and that pilots. They were not fired, but they got the first warning for that. What do you think about the Airbus A350-1000? Great airplane, I would like to fly it. I don't know what to say. Hi Captain, happy to see you brother. Slava Green, Geroim Slava, Sebastian. <laughs> Hi, Dennis. Great to see you again. I'm always interested in the night flying cockpit instrument color uh, thing, schemes. Are you happy with uh, with instrumentation lighting? Do you think light can be improved? I think lighting can be improved, Alexis, especially. Uh, Maybe I, I try to recall an ATR. Well, on ATR, I like the storm lights. I turn them on even during the nighttime. It's kind of comfortable. In Boeing, it's more dim light. But I think it should be more powerful in some way. But uh, we have also light usage policy. For example, when you fly during the nighttime, you need to 
uh, shut down the cockpit dome lights uh, 30 minutes before uh, landing to get your eyes uh, like more comfortable with the night time then have you landed in cardiff airport before i don't remember probably not Dennis, does any flight uh, school focus on becoming an ATP? Yeah, there are many. You should try Microsoft Flight Sim on camera. Oh, good idea, by the way. I had, I already filmed about the Microsoft Flight Sim. I've known there, but yeah, we're gonna try it once again, probably. Uh, if you should change country, do you think of choosing France? Uh, I like France. I was in Paris uh, for two weeks and a half for my type rating on 737. I like this place. I like Paris, but to live there, probably not. I think Paris already have. Uh, I wonder if if I go to abroad now, probably I'll like i have the way out let's say uh, if i go abroad if something happens that they will allow me to go abroad uh, my plan is to sit like for one month somewhere maybe romania or poland probably poland is crowded probably in slovakia or something i'm gonna sit there somewhere in a hotel or in some house i don't know i will call somebody if some so on may help me with that but it's not the point right right now just my thoughts i would stay there for one month and um, just i would apply to some airlines if they will not if i will not uh, be invited for the interview i'll just go somewhere for the long time shelter as the refugee but honestly, I don't want to change my airline. I don't want to change my country. I don't want to live there, refugee life. But if the conflict prolongs, like in the way it goes, I don't see any perspective working here in Ukraine. Um, I do the best I can for my country. I went to the military branch, by the way, and they say they don't need me because I, I don't have the military experience. So there is no, so just sit and do nothing, yeah? So <laughs> thankfully I have this YouTube channel and other YouTube channel and I have something to do and you guys help me a lot with uh, your donations. Uh, can it be a pilot with glasses vision impairment? Yeah, of course, it's not a big deal now. Uh, well, depends on your defects, but go to the air medical facility, they will tell you. Have you heard about Azure Air abandoned in Poland? No. Uh, Azure Air abandoned in Poland. I saw Azure Air on the main taxiway in Bristol Airport. It's blocking it. So they put the aircraft on the taxiway just not letting anyone to land there. Welcome to Netherlands, Dennis, <laughs> with your family, two hours with a car, be my guest. Yeah, Betsy, thank you so much. But I don't think I need the shelter in the nearby future. Hi, Captain, greetings from the fellow pilot, wishing you all the best and praise for you and your family. Slava Ukraine, get on Slava. Thank you, Bill. What airplane do you fly? Dennis, did you see Air India's big ball flying right over the Ukraine closed airspace? Um, sometimes there are uh, troubles with that flight right at 24, it can show you nonsense. Dennis, I live in Athens. What's your experience uh, of landing in Athens airport? Yeah. I like this airport a lot uh, since my career started uh, from that airport, I would say. Uh, then my first twin engine airplane uh, used to be Anton of 26 and we did the cargo flights from Ataturk airport in Istanbul to Athens every night. 
and it was my commercial pilot training so Athens really is my first international airport to land to on my own like being the trainee first officer so I touched the ground firstly outside my country being as a pilot uh, in Athens airport so I have warm warm uh, memories about it and uh, also I've flown there later as a captain and also first officer and also a captain uh, on Boeing 737 fantastic place and yeah, good memories sometimes uh, you have to start over even as a refugee my parents uh, and I left communist Cuba in 1967 to come to the United States the transition was hard but best decision they've ever made yeah Tony I would agree with you there are lots of Cubans uh, refugees in the United States and they have a good community you know and yeah that's that's great actually I wish Cuba would become the part of this civilized world again it's really they are really struggle there they have poverty they're really poor so you know uh, the country is good but the people are good but the government it, it is not <laughs> Oh, Dennis, I mainly fly at Cessna 172 or Piper Cherokee. Well, nice choice <laughs> for airplanes. Is your medical check once a year, Dennis? Yeah, once a year so far. Because I'm still 35 years old, so once a year. Dennis, if you are colorblind, can you still be a pilot there? Yeah, there is the big problem with colorblind. Mm. In most of the cases, it's not allowed to fly with the color blindness. Unfortunately, uh, around 8% of man population, I don't know why, but it's mostly the man who struggles with the color blindness. But you need really to check uh, this issue with air medical in your country. Hi, Palak Blog. Sorry for coming late. Nice stream. Thank you, Richie. Uh, have you ever flew a motion simulator <laughs> many times? I think already dozens of times. Captain, uh, you really look well considering everything. I see lots of people struggle suggesting streaming flight simulator and similar videos. I completely agree. Yeah, probably gonna move to the flight simulators. Uh, that's That was also my idea. So the main topics, what is interesting for people like to show uh, yeah, the Swiss 001 <laughs> type of the videos, uh, the flight simulator, since uh, the flight simulator community is really huge and there are lots of people who love flight simulators and fly them. I don't think I'm a professional flight simulator. I'm just a beginner in that. And uh, some of the flight simmers, they are better than me in many, many ways. But we can still do it just mainly for fun. But I can explain some of the procedures and we can try many more airplanes like Boeing 737 pilot tries to fly like McDonnell Douglas airplane or Embraer or Airbus. I already tried, yeah, different types of the airplanes. And one more stuff that what I'm thinking about is the aircraft investigation videos, but we have the big whales, big sharks there in, in that business, like mentor pilot who does it in um, the most professional way possible. So there is no any way, how can I reach that level on my own? And if you want to film the same, uh, if you want to discuss the same accidents or incidents, you need to film the video that will be better than mentor pilots for me it's impossible so yeah people would just see it and say well ah, this is some kind of a mentor filming mentor pilot is much better you are a loser 
No, no, I, I have sometimes comments like that. I, I'm not saying that Mentor Pilot is bad. He's a nice guy. He's doing really nice content. And I'm watching him almost every video of his. He's a great, great guy. Actually, I don't know if Peter would like this, but um, I want to share the story about the Peter, the Mentor Pilot. Uh, at first, I thought that, you know, I perceive him uh, in different way. I thought he's some kind of greedy person who thinks that, uh, who, who is in YouTube just for money, you know, because he has so many advertisements in his, uh, in his YouTube videos. And I didn't like him at first, <laughs> honestly. Uh, however, I was subscribed for him since he got 5,000 subscribers. And uh, in a while, I started to watch him again. So I ended, I ended to watch him because of those YouTube advertisements. But then I started to watch him again. And then I started to film my videos also. And I realized that he, it's a hard job to film something interesting. It's really, you really need to go through the topic research and with his team, you know, who's doing the CGI effects, etc. So no, it's not easy way. So this is, it is the almost like a full time job. You need to take this time, the precious thing, what you have is the time you need to, to take it from your family, to put it to YouTube, to put it for researches, etc. So he does it in a in the best way possible. So the advertisement is just a tiny little, you know, a word for what he spends for YouTube channel. So I don't think he's he's a bad guy. He's a good guy, and he also participate in aviation community. He always give his advice to someone if someone needs it. And uh, even he participated some kind of videos with, for the channels with just 100 subscribers, you know. And he has a good attitude for me as well. He ever, even proposed uh, great help. I will not tell you the details of that help, but he really proposed a great help. It's not financial okay, uh, help, but security help for me and my family in the situation we have in Ukraine. But I, I refused because we don't need that help so far. But he's a great guy. Yeah, thank you so much. Greetings to friends. Just contact me by email. Um, what email? Uh, send send me your email, okay? Aviator secretary secretary at gmail com it's in my uh, channel description channel about and there's my email then it's good to see you're doing okay despite the war I appreciate all you do for the aviation community and being an information resource during this awful war Peter is another awesome guy yeah he is and thank you for your warm and kind comment is there a code on the door in the cockpit, Dennis, yeah, yeah, and it's renewed, all right. So the cockpit door is the restricted access, yeah. The cockpit is restri restrictive access area, and the code that you see on the door, um, it renewed every like month or something, as far as I remember. So we have this code renewed for the airplanes every month, that's the security reason. What age did you start flying? I started flying when I was 18 years old from the gliders. What do you think of the 787 Dreamliner and would you like to try it uh, long haul? Yeah, I would like to, maybe I would like to try long haul flights. It's already been flying for 12 years or well, for certain years. Mm, well, we're gonna exclude this year probably. <laughs> uh, but I really want to try a long haul now, yeah. It's the good idea. 
if the cockpit door is locked from the inside can you open it from the outside uh, what with a special code yeah but you have to wait there are some of the doors uh, locks modifications you need to wait like you dial the code and you wait uh, 30 seconds or sometimes one minute you need to wait for the door to automatically open but if the person inside the cockpit selects the selector to deny even with the code you cannot open the door or if the person inside here may also he or she may also block the door with the mechanical lock there is the one inside we have the MELs. If your electronic electrical lock is not working, you can manually close the door with mechanic lock. However, the special procedure needs to be introduced in the airline to operate without this electrical lock. So yeah, that's a few words about the door. But I know how to open the door. Airplane would probably crash, but the door will be opened. <laughs> mm. Sorry. If the, mm, I think you're my best inspiration to be a, a pilot. Yeah, nice, nice to read those comments. Thank you. I'm a little bit shy, but thank you. <laughs> Have you ever experienced a tail strike in Boeing 7900? No, I haven't. I haven't got any tail strikes in my entire career. However, I flo I've flown the airplanes that are really vulnerable for that, like Boeing 737-900 or the ATR-600, uh, 72-600. Those are kind of vulnerable. ATR is mo more vulnerable compared to 737-900. So if the plane is hijacked, you cannot get inside the cockpit, correct? Yeah, you cannot get inside the cockpit you can just select deny and no one can open no one is possible to open the door from the cabin but there is the way I, I, as i said to you i will not tell you about it it's on boeing 737 i know about other planes but on boeing 737 it works but you need you need to do something that probably gonna crush the plane but probably not and the doors uh, could be opened how strong are cockpit doors there there are some videos you may uh, type cockpit door uh, shot by guns or something or fired to cockpit door so there you will see <laughs> how hard it is it was the guys got the cockpit door of 77 and they start to fire uh, with a pistol, with the guns, with the rifles to the door, and you would have the understanding of how how hard it is. Hello, always great to see you. What's your thoughts on MH370? Much love from New York. Thank you, John. How many go rounds you made in your career? Wow. Wow. Intentional or not, <laughs> because uh, then we go through the base training. You do some go rounds as well. I don't remember how many intentional, but unintentional. Let's say in Ukraine International, there were two. One I filmed, by the way. It's uh, on my videos. Uh, what else? Uh, in UTR Ukraine, there were seven. In Garuda, Indonesia, there were six. So, totally seven, six, 13 plus two here, 15 uh, for different reasons. Plane on the runway uh, that was filmed, um, poor weather, um, aircraft, unstable approach. <laughs> so, yeah. I discover your channel through mentor pilot. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Hi there, it's good to see you are streaming. Hope you are in a good spirit. Yeah, I'm 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 okay. Hey Dennis, my friend. Hey Jeff. Nice to see you. 
Greetings to you, Kane. Which aircraft do you more like? 707, 800, or 900? 800. The, the lighter the plane, the better is for handling, probably. 900, uh, we need to do the special. It is kind of vulnerable to uh, CG. Let's say we had the case in my airline that the airplane tilted upwards on a parking stand and after that we start to carry special cargo in the front cargo compartment but after that we put them we introduced the ground stability procedure so sometimes on that airplane well it also goes for 800 but 900 can really pitch up on the airplane so then you have the out cg you need to stay for a while with the passengers and to make sure it will not put the nose up. Um, is your wife still awake, Dennis? Uh, yeah, she she is. Did you know the crew of the Tehran crash? It was so horrible. Maybe good keep yours. So yeah, I knew part of the crew. I knew the first officer. That's it. I, I didn't know the captain, I know the instructor, some of the flight attendants, I, I knew them. That's uh, where our, so at first, you know, uh, at first, um, is the first step during this those two years of uh, severe degradation of my life as an airline pilot. So first it was the crash of our airplane that was hit by a rocket in Tehran. After that, COVID, immediately after that, like two months after it. After that, the war. Well, what else? What else? What else should I wait? Like asteroid crash into the Ukraine. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, I don't have words. Uh, did you ever have a uh, hairy mom moments? Oh, Corey, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for email addressing me. Did you have uh, hairy moments in the cockpit uh, that you were surprised by unexpected winds? Winds? No, not really. How does Sam, Sam Tui get to be in the cockpit while flying? Well, some of airlines allow uh, different people in the cockpit. Uh, normally, no, but sometimes, yes, depends on negotiations. Well, some like just planes they have access to the cockpit you know this channel problem just planes uh, some airlines they temporarily hire uh, the personnel like our airline did and then we filmed together with just planes we hired the the guy who was the cameraman for temporary to be employed in our airline to get the id card and to fly with us so yeah that's one of the solutions of course, they need to present uh, the police record and other stuff to be safe, let's say, and also... So Sanctuary got even in a lolly cockpit, you know? <laughs> they are very strict with uh, measures, but still they allowed him. And normally can go there on the ground, but not in flight, but some allow in flight. I also went to the cockpit of Antonov 24 of Motor Siege Airlines, but you know, they knew that I'm a pilot, I have all the um, IDs to go uh, to the plane, uh, like in Burispo, for example. I have a company ID card, so why not? Uh, the idea for other video is uh, that you can compare the 737 with Airbus or ATR with Q400 using your experience in some types of those airplanes. Um, 737 and Airbus, I would agree, and I already compared the ATR with Q400. It is in a video of the about the ATR. When you enter to UA, it was in 2017. 
uh, how did it become a pilot and is it hard? It's not. I have the videos about it. Be positive, everything is going to be fine, yeah. Uh, have ever let the passenger land a plane? Yeah, of course. I just walked, I just go to the passenger and dress like, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you want, you can land this plane. And yeah, we just go in through the lottery and we select the passenger and he or she goes to the cockpit and we just watch and the passenger flies the plane and they do the perfect shutdown. You will not see it on my videos because I'm not allowed to film that crazy stuff. But yeah, <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, I don't know how to say this name, so I just say Tui. <laughs> yes, I'm Tui. It's Chi. Tui. Um, greetings to your wife from bed saying tomorrow to Diana. Diana is sleeping. My wife is uh, surfing the phone. <laughs> Lottery is Ryanair style, yeah. How, uh, can you explain how plane works, uh, please? Um, I want to be a pilot. It's a long story, man. <laughs> I'm going to spend a few hours explaining how they work. They fly with the help of magic. It, codes, it, it is called aerodynamics. <laughs> really, if you want like professional explanation, um, Probably had some videos of mine on YouTube, but you can Google and have the answer of only only questions there. It's a very very long answer. My family is from Ukraine, mostly from Odessa, but they all immigrated to United States. Yeah, why not? Why are you not fighting? Because I'm not a fighter. I'm the airline pilot. How long did it take you to get zero? to ATP a license, um, five years. How do you graduate from aviation high school? Uh, it's not the aviation high school, it's um, pilot school, <laughs> where you have, or flight school, let's say, or where you have your training for the pilot license. How, just go there and, and fly, <laughs> pay money and fly. Have you played Microsoft Flight Simulator? Yeah, many times. I have many videos about the Microsoft Flight Simulator. Even I have the video why I will never buy the Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I need to update it, by the way. I'll just open it on my personal computer. Poland, Ukraine, forever friends. You know, greetings to Poland, by the way, at first. But you know, uh, that's the way how the things should be like between our countries yeah we had um the long history right of some of the fights between poland and ukraine even some really dark and bad history uh, that we did to poland like ukrainians our ancestors of, of ukrainian people polish people but it's just a history we stepped over it and we start the new relations that is how it should be and now we are friends with uh, poland i like poland and my wife by the way she's half Pol polish <laughs> the only flight school i've passed is on gta <laughs> Uh, what is your favorite layover destination, Dennis? Uh, home, probably. <laughs> but if we're gonna speak about, we don't have uh, lots of layovers. Um, I don't like Dubai. I don't like that hotel. Probably not Dubai, but that hotel. I don't like. I'm speaking about what I don't like. Hmm. Where, where, where should, where was okay for me? 
it's hard to recall. Uh, probably in Copenhagen. Um, because the hotel was inside the airport. So for us, it took like 10 minutes to go to the hotel. <laughs> How long did it take you to be a pilot in charge in command? Like three years on ATR and one year here on Boeing 737. Have you ever flown flew to Poland? Yeah, to Warsaw many times. Uh, don't ask for how much training does a commercial ATP rated pilot log is reading a practical ATM training. What are they required to demonstrate at aircraft maintenance inspector? Oh, I, I don't know, hard to say. Hello, Dennis, are you still in the village? Yeah, I'm still in the village, but I want to change my current location to other village. In a city, it's, it's uh, still unsafe to be inside every city of Ukraine. So I want to change to other village, um, but yeah, I already told the reasons why I want to change. I will pay. Uh, now I don't pay the money, but uh, to produce the videos, I need more comfortable environment, let's say. And we have some problems with power lines here. So I don't know when the electricity is over or not. It's going to be over probably right now. So I need really to change the... Did you see the Red Bull pilot swap stunt uh, that went wrong? Do you think it is good development that stunt are done for likes on YouTube? Like the pilot who jumped out the plane had filmed the crash. Bar Jen, I have the latest video on my channel about that particular case, about the Red Bull swap plane, and I told everything about it. But I can tell you right now, I'm okay with that kind of professional stunts uh, done by Red Bull. Even though Red Bull got a little bit crazy with, with their stunts, they organize it, they clear the area. Uh, what I don't like is that they lost the airplane. <laughs> and I like the airplanes. I would like to have the one they lost. <laughs> and I think many of the aircraft, airplane, like aviation enthusiasts, they would like to see that plane flying again but the plane is the plane uh, the, the main issue is that FAA uh, actually have the denial letter for them not to perform this stunt whether it was because of the Trevor Jacob stunt before leaving the plane uh, but maybe they thought the parallel but if you have this denial letter why would you continue to do it like okay we have the denial letter but we don't care okay let's jump <laughs> and now your swap goes wrong and everyone knows about it so i advised in my video about um, if you have the denial from the faa try to do it somewhere else like in europe Mexico, Canada, whatever, maybe their authorities have other regulations and you will have the approval to perform the stunt over there. So that's the issue that they didn't comply with the FA uh, restrictions. And they that actually uh, brings them bring, brings yeah, brings them closer to what the Trevor Jacobs done. But Still, I respect those guys who performed this stunt um, more, of course, than the Trevor Jacob. Trevor Jacob is just a crazy guy. But those guys, they were not doing this stuff for likes on YouTube. I'm almost sure about it. They were doing uh, this stunt. I mean, Red Bull and the particular guys, like, forgot the names. Andy, probably, and Luke because they are professionals in their skydiving and their pilots and they want you know to do something to do something unique okay we're gonna do something really unique that no one done before us so they wanted this they want something unique trick unique stunt and unfortunately it turned not good for them and for the airplane that's pity 
We invite you to Poland and your family. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. But no, I cannot go anywhere. Sorry. If uh, the war continues till the summertime, I'm thinking to send my wife and my daughter to some of the European country. Because here, uh, my daughter, she, she will turn like nine years old. She, she needs good education. And here in Ukraine, we have online education, but it gives nothing really. So we need proper good school. We need this environment with children. Here, all the schools that are closed, it's just unsafe to go to the school right now. Because some of the schools, they just got bombed. Uh, just go off the phone with Josh. He's still in the loss. Uh, once he said hello to you and your family, and he said still strong. Uh, greetings to Josh Jennifer. Thank you so much for for your messages for watching me here. Let's see. Does a pilot need to know all the patterns and functions of the cockpit? Yeah, the pilot needs to know, but you use them like. 80% of those patterns you use just on a flight simulator on the, throughout your training. So some of the buttons you switch only then you have emergencies or urgencies. So then you see all these buttons um, now. And some of them, they are used just by maintenance personnel. If you speak about the flight control panel on of Boeing 77, there are two of the switches that are used only by maintenance. And on ATR, there are actually two big panels near to the pilots that are also used by the maintenance personnel. Very interesting, right? So yeah, but you need to know what, what it does, you know, because you need to be professional and yeah, understand the things. Red Bull races happened uh, here and uh, in the Indianapolis Stadium. They do some crazy stunts here. What is the biggest delay you have ever had? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop on that one. <laughs> oh, the biggest delay I had, well, I spent four hours and I don't know how many minutes, maybe 20, around 20, with some, four hours and 20, something minutes on the airplane together with passengers during the winter time on ATR um, I was first officer by that time and we were flying from Moscow Nukawa Airport to Kharkiv probably uh, Putin is the person to blame because uh, the Vunkov airport is their government airport where he flies and he's like deputy deputies by the time it was Medvedev and they were coming from some kind of event and then this Tsar Russian king arrives to the Vunkov airport ATC tells everyone stop hold on stop uh, airplanes who hold in a who able to hold, they hold, and those who can go to alternate airports of Moscow. Putin landed in like one hour uh, since we got our passengers. But because of the precipitation of the snow actually falling, uh, we were waiting for the icing track. The icing track came, but the liquid um, finished then they started they started to the, the ground the icing procedure and the liquid finished then they ended up with just one part of the wing okay we waited one hour or something for other track with anti-ice fluid they came and the same story <laughs> the fluid finished we waited one hour or something again for other track, for the third track. And here you go, it came full. And what they did, they, we, it was the longest the icing in my life, like I think 40 minutes or something. 
and they spent all of the fluid on our airplane on small ATR 42. I think they just uh, do the stuff like that to get the money to waste the thing. Um, so probably you need to take care about your fluid, right? You need to be efficient in that. But they waste it for purpose to have to say, okay, we wasted like this tons of fluid, so we need money. Okay, so they do it on purpose, and I was sure that they didn't did it on purpose because our stand was remote and near to the area that those tracks were refilled. So it came. We saw that it came from that area, and it went back for refilling the truck. It is crazy, you know, then you experience the delay. Oh my God, it's crazy. In Poland, we have a lot of Ukrainian children in children's school and they are doing very well. We are open for Ukrainian people. Thank you, Jakub. Yeah, yeah. I like Pol Poland, Polish language It's great, but still probably cannot I understand like 40% of what Pol Polish says, like 40, because I know so many, some of Ukrainian. If I would know only Russian, I would not understand a thing. But Ukrainian is more close to Polish. At what age did you flew for the first time in your life as a passenger or pilot? As the passenger I flown, then it was three months or something. And then which type of airplanes were that? In the, I don't know the type, some kind of Russian plane, Illusion or Tupolev. Do you take care of all the animals, Dennis, every day? Um, it's kind of hard. Um, we got rid of one pig already, and that bull I showed you. So they're gone, unfortunately. Yeah. I like, I love animals, but the owners say we don't need them anymore because we struggle in dealing with them, you know. Mm, and we are in luck of the food for the animals because the grass here is not very high. And uh, the wheat that was stored from the previous year, it's already over. So for us, it was like decision to cut down one, one bull or to buy the food for them, which is really expensive. So we decided to get down the bull. Actually, we sold it. The, the owner sold the bull and someone just sent it for the meat factory or something. Hello, Sammy. Thank you for your kind support. And the pig, well, we cut down the pig ourselves. And yeah. <laughs> I don't like this stuff if you ask me I like animals but here is just the farm you know the farm in the farm you like you feed animals you kill animals you eat animals that's that's the life what is the fly school that have you done your training captain it, it is the government sponsored fly school it's um uh, Krapivnitsky State Flight Academy. I did the commercial pilot training there. For prior pilot, I did it in local air club of Kyiv. Uh, that air club, air club, unfortunately, was destroyed by Russian troops. I know about it since I got some photos uh, from the place. So the place where I started uh, my flying, first time then I was 18 years old, the place where I met my wife, that air club was completely destroyed in Buzova. All the hangars, all of the, most of the gliders and airplanes. Giroim Slava, loyalist, thank you. Do you have your own pilot credit card for fuel? Yes, we do have. So are you doing very good uh, against Russia? Very good. We try our best, but still, you know, they have 
overwhelming force on the eastern part they concentrated lots of force we are we are struggling really struggling but we fight hard for our land and i hope with the help we have from the united states and other western countries i hope we're gonna we're gonna win this battle i not hope i'm sure we don't have the other way rather than we win this battle you're a true rancher, Dennis. No doubt about it. Yeah. If your family goes for another country of Europe, you're going to continue with with your channel. Yeah, of course, the channel is for the lifetime with me. I will never give up my channel. It's my second life. It's what actually keeps me going now. Without this channel, I would... I, I wouldn't, I can imagine. Do you know what the situation in Kiev, Brisbane airport, are the airplanes destroyed? No. Oh, sorry. The airplanes are okay there. From what I know. Even I saw some of the airplanes, then I went to Brisbane. Don, nice to see you here. Oh, where is set for the air club? Yeah, for me as well. Actually, I, I got the video where I took my car. It was, uh, I think, in the autumn, right? That I took my drone, I took the car, and I filmed the surrounding airfields around, um, around Kiev. And actually, I was flying with the... American guy with, who took me on the right on his RV-10 aircraft. And the place where we flying, it was also destroyed by Russian troops. Nalivaikovka, it was also destroyed. Buzawa Nalivaikovka, it's devastated. My mother's um, house uh, was in Buzawa village near to the air club. And the house was also destroyed. So yeah, uh, I wish we could send our troops without war. This will definitely lead to another Cold War era. Greetings from the United States. Yeah, greetings, Drew. Uh, I think the United States may enter this conflict if Russia would try to attack, let's say, allies, close allies like Poland or, I don't know, Germany. We don't know what to expect from Russia, right? Uh, just yesterday, uh, Putin said that they have, they would have like thunder punishment for those who help Ukraine. But actually, many countries help. So I don't. I, I, it's like you know, he's just lying all the time. Sorry about the attacks. Russia wanted you back. Russia was never another slow thing. Yeah. Time to take off your cap. I I'll, I will not take off because I need to go to the barber shop <laughs> because I never cut my hair before. Oh, I have a new member. David Monks. Welcome to Cutty Pod. Yeah. Thank you very much for your support, David. And welcome to the to the group. Uh, I'm editing the new video right now. It was filmed on uh, Boeing 737 Fly Simulator. It's going to be available only the full version, let's say, will be available only for members. So, David, you'll see it, of course. Thank you. Loving your the content. Thanks, Dennis and Slav Green. Geroim Slav. Are you in the workers' union for pilots? Yes. Uh, actually, all of our pilots are in union. Um, are you okay from the war? Hope you're, you're... I'm not okay with that war. I lost uh, my life, let's say. Not my physical life, but my 
last life than I was a pilot. So now it's totally new chapter for me. And I don't like it <laughs> so far. And yeah, I'm not okay with it. I want everything to be as before, but it will never be as before. Maybe it will be better even than we're gonna win. Who knows? Uh, the main thing now is to stay alive. The rest is... Is nothing. Hi, Dennis. How are you? Do you know that the current state of Brisbane Airport is? Obviously, Hastomo was devastated, but it would be interesting to see the things are in Brisbane. The last time I was in Brisbane, everything was fine. There, there was one rocket that hit um, probably the military part of the Brisbane Airport, but still far away from the airplanes. And it happened like more than one month ago. And Borodanka Airfield, do you know how it, how it is? I don't know about, about the airfield itself, but Borodanka was devastated by Russians. I need to check about the airfield. Well, actually, in uh, Borodanka and Buzova, uh, the damage was caused to facilities like house, houses, hangars, probably the same goes for Borodanka. But what can you do with airfield, right? Uh, the airfield there is just a field, it's a big field. As in Buzava, uh, in Buzava they built some kind of runway. Probably it was also damaged. What I heard on Buzava, there was uh, the Russian airplane was hit, and it went and just crashed into the hangar with the airplanes. I guess the airplane mode was not working. So I didn't I don't really know about the Bardanka. My idea is to go to the Kiev and film everything, but my wife is against it. She say like there are lots of mines still and she she afraid about me there. So she said no no no, I will not let you go <laughs> to visit that places. She afraid about me. And sometimes, once in a while, you see that in the news that mostly like um, truck drivers, they go, uh, if they will go to the field, sometimes those trucks just explode because of the mines. There are lots of mines. Uh, how are your parents then? Yeah, they went back to Brisbane. Uh, they went back because they are quite far away from the airport and I think they are okay. Wow, we have new Patreon. Jakub, thank you so much for becoming the Patreon. And also we have the access for special perks for my side, special content. Thank you so, so much for your kind support. Jakub, thank you so much again. If you If you are here, just let me know. <laughs> Thank you guys for your kind support. Jonathan Win uh, Winton also became the candid pilot here on membership. Thank you so much for your participation, our membership. And again, you'll have the special access to some of the perks. Um, what, what you'll have, my friends, during this membership, firstly, the access uh, to my content that I do not post for public. Let's say, uh, I call it director's cut. <laughs> Maybe it's not interesting for everyone, right? Like a day in life as an airline pilot goes, I film like, it could be like several hours of that video, but I cut everything and post like 15 minutes for entertaining, for it to be more entertaining for general public. But maybe some of you want to see something in details and that I'll put for membership. And depends on that level, so you have the access for my uh, personal um, information, let's say personal contacts like Skype. It could be Skype, it could be everything. And if you have some kind of, I don't know, problem, questions, ideas, or you just want to speak, we can have communications on the Skype. Uh, 
I don't know how to perceive your comment, Lynn. Do you have do you have flight sim controls in your house? Yeah, I brought the one with me. Then I was ouch, where is it? So here we go. Uh yeah, I have the joystick with me. I got it from my last trip to Brisbane. It's dusty a little bit. <laughs> and I'm updating my flight simulator. I'm gonna show you. So here we go. Uh, I wanna try maybe, uh, but I have the poor internet connection here to create the stream on flight simulator. So I'll try to record the video. Just hope. Uh, I'm not sure about the streams on Flight Simulator. I, again, because of the internet connection. Thanks, mate. Keep up your good work during these hard times. We all appreciate it from the fellow YouTuber to another. Keep it up. I know making the time put content. Oh, Jonathan, thank you so much. Uh, then do you think the war is gonna stop? Ooh, Sebas. Um, well, what we hear from our authority, like management, uh, that um, we gonna use the weapons that Western allies give us, gonna use them against Russia in a month or something. So now they say, okay, 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 we give you uh, weapons some weapons, but we're going to use them probably in, in summer, <laughs> summer time. So the war will still ongoing, I think, till the end of the year. Hi, Dennis, how are you? Lovely. Thank you, Liz, for your comments. I read them all on my channel. Thank you for your kind support. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm doing fine. How are you? How was your day? Can you fly over the city? Yeah, you can fly. Why not? Uh, do, you, do you have your motorcycles uh, in storage? Uh, I have them in my garage. They are safe. <laughs> like your joystick, yeah. <laughs> I'm here loving your content. I'm glad to be your patron. Thank you, Jakub. Thank you. Is it Jakub or Jakub, I think, yeah? Have you ever heard of Swiss 001? Yeah, of course. I sometimes even watch his videos. He's a very funny guy. So then I'm in bad temper. Sometimes I click to that kind of entertaining videos. Okay, guys, what's going on today? <laughs> He's a so, so funny guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's, he's nice. I even comment then I see him like streaming sometimes I go there and I comment and there are lots of public who watch my videos and they also disappointed <laughs> zero zero one <laughs> why so we have the like a common public then I comment on, on his live streams uh, like many people start to write me like oh pilot dog hello I love your bikes, thank you. Yeah, it's Polish name and you pronounced it very well, thank you. <laughs> Captain, are you going to get a patriotic Ukrainian tattoo? We should all do it in solidarity. <laughs> Maddox, no, 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 I'm not gonna do it. I, I want to keep my body clean. It doesn't matter what you have on your skin, it matters what you have in your head. So there's a one legend about you and Captain Joe, <laughs> the best. <laughs> Thank you. And kiss you from, it, from Italy. Yeah, Laura, greetings to Italy. Italy, sorry. Buongiorno. That's the only thing I know. <laughs> I have an Italian mate uh, who's known for um, 
Italian military air force on ATR. They have it like patrolling airplane and they use it for cargo transport and patrolling. And we've flown together in, um, uh, in Garuda, Indonesia. And he, he was married on Ukrainian wife. <laughs> His wife names Julia. And yeah, he's a nice guy. One question I have, you may be able to answer. UA Boeing 737, it's 900. Papa Sierra Lima is 900. And Papa Sierra India as well, 900. Has been operating flights for around Europe to and from Khartoum this week. Uh, this operated by airline of the Ukraine government. Uh, it's operated by our airline. But seems like we have only cargo flights or repatriatic flights then we take our citizens from the the places where they stuck even bef before the war had started and we we just ship them <laughs> to europe and that's it and we have some of the flights like that and there are not many flights and still we have lots of pilots lots and lots of pilots and those flights are just not enough for us to fly that's the bad thing now hey guys welcome back to the channel and uh, the new sweet 001 video let's borrow this landing and <laughs> this won't great now better i saw on the last stream dennis yes i mean thank you <laughs> yeah he's a, he's a nice guy and he also uh, I think he got the private pilot license already. Tell me the name of the Swiss 001 because I heard different theories. So what's the guy's name? They think that Russia meant to destroy the Anton of 225. Um, I think they could destroy it for a purpose. Because uh, Antonov, Dmitry Antonov, the chief pilot of Antonov Airlines, he showed uh, many planes that were for sure destroyed for purpose or destroyed or damaged. I agree with you, pilot bloke and Captain Joe, the best ones. Not sure. Personally, I don't like my content, my friends. I think I perform really poorly. Maybe that's why my channel is not developing well in recent times. Uh, how many planes in Ukraine international fleet? Hard to say. Now, um, now I have lots of planes in Ukraine. I cannot tell you the exact number. <laughs> Sorry, that's internal information. We have some outside and some planes on storage. It used to be 20 with something. I'm not sure. Also. Mm, the the con i mean he's a pilot so it's kind of normal though or not i don't know the thing if swiss zero one zero one knows you exist you and him could be friends uh he knows that i i exist we spoke uh, on some chat on, on on the comment and i wrote him on uh, instagram about the possible collaboration video like real pilot versus simulator pilot uh, flies the 737 or something we can we could do this kind of uh, video he said that it's great idea and yeah nothing happened <laughs> after it so we just lost let's say this contact and it could be a very nice video but he's doing his own stuff Every day, new video. Wow, it's hard. His name is Niklaus Schmidt. He lives in Frankfurt. Oh, I thought he's from Switzerland. <laughs> Niklaus Schmidt. I'm going to leave the stream. Yeah, but thank you very much for your kind support. You're so nice. <laughs> I've heard some pilots with some really bad English. Lol. Yeah. What's your favorite 77 variant? Well, the shorter, the better. 
the smaller the better i would like to fly the boeing 737 yeah as you say like maybe 600 or 700 with the 27k engines so that that is fantastic my betsy he originally I th uh, is i think and yes he has a ppl yeah well, good night dennis good night hello from canada you're Resilience and inspiration to own. You're awesome. We also need pilots here. Oh, DP. I didn't know that Canada needs pilots. <laughs> yeah, great. You can say something with your native language. Uh, no, but no one understands it on the chat. Why? Why should I? Captain, what is the most difficult airport you have landed at and why? Uh, it's um, and the airport in uh, indonesia it's surrounded by mountains and you can you're coming from the sea that's the only way one way landing there because at the runway edge there is the hill so we can only land from one side and you need to perform the final turn at altitude of at height of 300 feet that's close And only visual approach is possible. Good ever. Greetings from EVPVA. Greetings to Warsaw. Captain, can you escape Ukraine through the forest <laughs> if things escalated more? Oh, I don't want to escape through the forest, my friends, because it's illegal. Um, I would probably, if they, Russia would start like use nukes in every city here, so everyone would just escape. I would say civilians. Yeah, we would we will escape <laughs> because there is no chance how we're gonna survive here in Ukraine if they will start to destroy our cities. So that's the only way possible for me to ex escape through the forest. So if our border control will not allow us to leave, the only way for men to escape is just through the forest or mountains or I don't know. <laughs> Have you ever gone to United States? No, I've never been there, but I want to go there. Uh, not for living, just to, as a tourist. What it's like to be a pilot and does it get boring? It might be boring if you fly to the same destinations all the time. Hi to Ireland, Aziz. Nice to meet you here. I know uh, an ex SAS pilot who used to fly Boeing 737 600. And he said he hated it because of the power. <laughs> I expected him to say how much he loved it. But he said he was so pleased then it was then it was retired. Hmm, I didn't know. I never flown it personally. I never for me, um, the smallest Boeing 77 I've flown is Boeing 77 500, but it has like from what oh, I don't remember. Probably it's 18.5k engines so not even 20k so for that it was okay but i would like to try <laughs> 737 600 with 27k engines that will be a fighter jet <laughs> what were the reasons for your last three go arounds and where did they happen greetings right well thank you for the question uh, maybe you lost two go-rounds, right? I remember two. Uh, let's speak about the Boeing 737 because the ATR I did a long time ago. Uh, the first go-around I did in my airline was then I was already a captain. So my, my airline, Ukraine International, they took me as a first officer and I flown like that for a year. And then I was upgraded for a captain. And like in three months, I did my first go around. It was on approach in Brisbane Airport, runway one and left. It was a rainy time. The cloud base was around 300 feet of uh, height and the first officer was flying. 
and I say whether it's the weather is okay for him and he said yeah 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 the weather is fine so okay and before he used to fly uh, Soviet made Antonovs and I thought okay the guy has a nice experience probably he can easily handle the situation because there was some wind and low quiet cloud base and just a simple eyeless approach you know and he just switched off the autopilot even before he saw the runway and he just started to deviate from the he was not keeping the flight directors well and firstly the airplane started to you know going up above the glide slope i told him like glide slope glide slope we are above the glide slope but he continued to go up and say okay yeah we're going up. we're going up and he like pushed it was almost while well dotted above he started to push and he was concentrated on a glide but he lost the localizer we were left of track already saw the runway he was oh oh my god i need to like to, to, to turn to the it, it's what i think he thought okay i need to turn right he corrected the localizer but he again lost the glide slope but you know it's already visual reference already passed the minimum scope we were stable at the minimums but he was like so much everything was messed up with the flight directors and i thought okay the runway is long we're gonna land any case so just continue you know but then he realized then he corrected the localizer he realized that he's above and he just put the thrust levers, the engine power really, engine thrust to idle at altitude of 150 feet height on the altitude. But yeah, and I say, well, 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 what you are doing? Just increase the thrust. But that thrust already went down. And uh, yeah, the speed was decelerating fast, even though I put the thrust it was around at 50 feet of height, really close to the ground. And the pitch was high, around 7 degrees. And I say, okay, the speed is dropping. Like I thought, okay, the speed is dropping. I think that it's going to be the hard landing or the tail strike. So I said to him, go around. And he said, you have control. <laughs> and it happened, you know, at 50 feet, even lower in that case. I say, okay. Boom, I put I pushed the toga, I immediately advanced the thrust and I maintained like seven degrees of the pitch and the airplane was like this flaring, flaring. It touched the ground with the wheels just a little bit and then we performed the go-around. Nobody said to me positive rate <laughs> since I was under control immediately. <laughs> it's happened for me to be under control in this situation, so yeah at around 1000 feet of altitude i saw that the gear is down <laughs> no one told me positive rate i didn't tell the gear up okay we have the gear gear up okay we did one more approach to, i told him like you want to make a one more approach and landing and he said no 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 it's yours <laughs> yeah later i discovered that um uh, he has so many, I would say, flashbacks from Antonov, uh, so they don't have the flight directors. Uh, it's confusing for them, still was confusing for them, for him in particular, um, because, uh, yeah, he was flying like one year, the Boeing 737, but still was, you know, this, this kind of old habits, and he's kind of elderly person. Then you are older than, I think, 50, or close to 50, it's still hard for you to change because um, you are not changing just the airplane type, you change the philosophy. Well, Airbus and Boeing, they have different philosophy, but Soviet-made airplane that has four crew members in the cockpit is totally different with the Boeing 737. It's like, it's better to prepare the guy from academy or from the flight school uh, then to red train this kind of elderly guys who've known that Antonovs or Tupolevs has the big issue. Uh, 
uh, if Russia uses nukes in Ukraine, they are stupid because the land will be useless for both Russia and Ukraine. Uh, fast guy, not correct. If you look at uh, today's uh, cities of Hiroshima, city of Hiroshima, yeah, you'll see that it's normal city, even though it was bombed by a nuclear bomb. Um, the nuclear bomb um, is detonated at some of the altitude before reaching the ground to avoid this nuclear fallout because nuclear fallout it's if it's detonated near to the ground level this nuclear fallout the radiation will go for many hundreds and sometimes thousands of kilometers that can reach the uh, your army right so it's detonated at uh, few hundred meters above the ground to the ma the massive destruction goes because of the shock wave not the radiation the, uh, radiation is the secondary or even thirdly uh, way uh, for destruction if you spend like two days in a shelter in a basement near even to ground zero of nuclear fallout your chances to survive are very very high you will survive it so yeah happily we have the basement here <laughs> so if we we hear this uh, threat the alarm for a possible nuclear attack we're gonna go to the shelter for 48 hours and after that you after two weeks you can actually go and see the epicenter of the nuclear blast and you'll be you'll have some doubts okay but you'll be you'll survive let's say and you will probably not have uh, big issues with your health so everyone's speaking about like the world will be destroyed because of the nukes no it will not be if uh, the worst situation stars uh, according to latest analysis according to analytics um, half of the population can lost their lives because mostly we live in the cities but all the people who live in the villages mostly all of them will survive this uh, nuclear war but you know if that happens uh, if russia would start a nuclear war against the world many people would lose their lives of course i mean global war let's say about it but everyone in the world they will find every russian and they'll punish them i mean literally punish we don't need those crazy guys to exist if they start to kill the world right so it will be not only devastation of russia but devastation of russian people so I don't think they're gonna start it. Sorry, I drink from the bottle today. <laughs> mm. But yeah, we, we are afraid of it, honestly. I have a family and yeah. You know that in Switzerland, they built um, shelters that can withstand the radiation fallout uh, and they were built they were built in um soviet era times like in 60s or something yeah that's the thing about the go around and uh, the last go around uh, uh, i will not tell you <laughs> because it's on my channel <laughs> it's it was filmed from the head we appreciate your dedication to your channel. It must be past midnight where you are right now. Take care of yourself. Yeah, it's 2 a.m. 2.11. Uh, I can agree with you uh, from own experience that pitch angle is important. Yeah, Sammy, it's, it is. I don't know if uh, this is some private question, but how much thousand hours of flight do you have as a 737 pilot? <sighs> Around 3,000. 
Greetings to Romania, Nik Nikos. Thank you for your kind support, too. When do you decrease the thrust to idle? Once uh, at 20 or 10? I put it to idle in 10. Uh, no, it's uh, too late. And it slammed so hard on the ground in my simulator. It's just, just a simulator back, but usually then I have really gusty winds. I retard it between 20 and 10, something like that, but usually near to the 20. I do it like Autoland does. So at 50, I like think about flare. At 40, okay, I start some moment, yeah. So uh, the Autoland system, how it releases the airplane at 50 feet. So little by little, the airplane comes to this a landing position so the same for me i at 50 i like think about the flare and then at between 40 and 30 i really flare the airplane and i put the idle thrust uh flight crew training manual says that the ideal thing is to get the airplane in landing landing position and thrust at idle so the thrust should come to idle at the same moment as airplane touches the ground but you know it's never you can never predict it so i like put the thrust to idle to make sure that it is on idle because if i would not have the thrust on idle i will not have the spoilers uh, so yeah the spoilers are more important than to reach um, the thrust to idle at the touchdown point how did you prepare for your pilot job assessment? Thank you. Uh, Aziz, um, my advice for you is to go to the latest pilot jobs website or other website you might search in like Google. They have the preparation scenarios for your particular airline. So if you go there, you train and um, yeah, we'll be ready. Just go like at least two weeks before your uh, assessment. What are your favorite airlines apart from UAA and Garuda? Uh, I like Emirates, but uh, there are some good parts and bad parts. But I like I like them really. Qatar Airways. Mm, I like American Airlines United. So what else? <laughs> I don't really like your European airlines. Uh, I mean, their flag carriers like KLM, Lufthansa, Air France. <laughs> Sorry if I am saying wrong things about them. Um, but they are so closed. I mean, this have the closed environment. So as for Lufthansa, I don't like that they give just one chance for a pilots to apply there. For KLM, it's a long, long story. Uh, I have the store, two of the stories why I don't like them. <laughs> but really, maybe they are nice, but I have two of the stories that they they were absolutely horrible with me, with me personally. Yeah, lot, lot, lot is okay. Lot is helping us nowadays. We have our flight attendants working for a lot. Some of them, like 20 with something. Um, so Lufthansa gives just one attempt for pilot to join their airline. That's what actual German person, German cadet pilot told me. He went to Lufthansa, he didn't pass the screening, so he will never be hired for the airline. But I think it's nonsense. I think it's not good attitude. Have you ever heard the people clapping after the landings? No, no, just then I fly as the passenger. Hey, greetings from Poland, Dennis. Daniels, thank you. And greetings to Poland. Dzień dobry. Or night, yeah? It's Is it a night there? I think, yeah. <laughs> hey, I wish you and your family as well as all people who are suffering from this crisis all the best. Take care. Great videos, but more of a great guy. Thank you. 
Apply for Turkish Airlines. They fly many routes across Europe, Africa, and Middle East with their 737 fleet. I think they are still recovering from the COVID crisis. They don't have the job opportunities, especially for expats. And I cannot apply anywhere right now. Where is going to be your next video, not stream? I think next... I think this weekend, probably. Ryanair uh, is the undisputed best airline in Europe. Sorry, just putting that out of the air. <laughs> Do you know uh, what is form cross the T dot the I is put U in the middle? I don't know. Much love from United States. Thank you, John, for your kind support. What type of 737 do you fly? Uh, 737NG. But I can also fly Classic. Well, it's still in my license. But I haven't been flying it for, I think, three years or something. Don't leave UA so many memories. Yeah, fun guy. Uh, why I want to stay with the Ukraine International Airlines? First, because we have fantastic pilots there. They are my friends. They are a part of my family. I would say, and the second reason they allow me to film <laughs> videos. So that's the main two main things why I want to continue my job with Ukraine International. Unfortunately, now it's impossible. And I hope that situation goes well soon. But there, I don't see any chance for the situation to improve in Ukraine in nearby future, in 2022, I would say. Uh, what about Polish Charter and Terrier? I, I know nothing about it, Daniels. Know nothing about it. Jonathan Winton, I agree with you. They make the best blends. Yeah, you mean about uh, Ryanair? Can you talk about China Air 5735 if it's pilot related? Uh, let me check. Thank you for reminding me about it. Probably have some update uh, on Af Herald website. Uh, mm. Where is it? China Eastern Boeing 737 800. Well, the recent information update from 20th April. Uh, CAAC, so their Civil Aviation Authority released a statement indicating the pre preliminary report has been submitted to IKEA. Hmm. The data restoration from the CVR, Cockpit Voice Recorder, and FDR Flight Data Recorder is still in progress. The aircraft will left assigned cruise altitude. The radar recorded the last position at 3,380 3, meters, speed over ground more than 1,000 kilometers an hour. Uh, horizontal star degrees runner. The main wreckage was found in a pile of 45 square meters in depths of 2.7 meters position and included the and included horizontal stabilizer. The vertical tail left the right engines, left right wings. No, 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 no. So nothing, nothing really told. Uh, flight crew and cabin crew certifications was without without flow. The air aircraft was airworthy with no deferred entries, no MELs. Everything was okay. Yeah. No dangerous goods on board. Navigations operate normally. No dangerous weather. Radio communication okay. So everything okay uh, states that probably it could be, I think, could be something wrong with the stabilizer or something wrong with the pilot, unfortunately. Uh, so far, we we are out of the clue. We are waiting for 
still the restoration of the CVR and FDR is ongoing, so we don't know the real data. Доброго вечора на Закарпаттю. Доброго вечора, ми з України. Сподіваюсь, що у вас там все добре. Uh, would you fly as a private pilot such as Wister Jet? I don't know what do you mean private pilot. What was the hardest subject in pilot exams? Um, probably mathematics for me. It was really hard. But I solved it. <laughs> Maybe pilot suicide, yeah, probably. I, I don't know, we don't know for sure because they say the data restoration of the CVR is still in progress. So I have it, the article here, data restoration is still in progress. So they hit the ground very hard. Uh, the CVR, FDR were damaged severely, so we don't know what to do then. Then I flew KBP to Warsaw Warsh with the UEA in November 2020. The flight was scheduled to be on Embraer, but the airline merged the daily flight into single cylinders. So I haven't flown on Embraer yet. Yeah. Do you know about the Mexican airlines like Air Mexico? Or yeah, I know them. Yeah. Uh, are you allowed to use my mobile devices but only up top 10,000 feet? Well, I we may use it. My airline policy dictates that you can use mobile device if it's air, in air mode all of the time. So I just select everything to air mode. All the cameras, all the mobiles, you don't really need to switch them off. But you need like... Uh, for the videos, you cannot film from the hands uh, below 10,000. So you need to be concentrated on flying below 10,000, sterile cockpit, hands-free. Then in cruise flight, I sometimes film from my iPhone. <laughs> okay, guys, it's been two hours since we talk, so it's getting late and I need to go to go sleep hope you're doing well did you get to visit Kiev recently uh, I think two or three weeks ago I visited the place all right guys thank you very much for participation on this live stream I wish you all the best and um, peaceful sky whatever you are stay awesome and have a great time <laughs>